Tani, just pray for us. And then uh, let's go and talk a little bit and allow God to be, God will just share. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Good morning, Father. God, we just come, Lord, just to worship you, Father, in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you that you have wake, awoken us, Father God, in our right minds, Lord, and that we decided, Father, to come out together as a family and worship you, Lord. So, Father, we ask that this word that is coming forth, Father, will penetrate hearts, Lord, that it will bring enlightenment, that it will be soothing, and that it will be healing, God. We just pray, Father God, right now, we, Pastor and I, just lay ourselves down, God, and Father, we just ask that you speak to us, Father, that we be transparent in what we're going to share, Father God, because we know, Lord, that we are not perfect, Lord, and that we all need help. So, Father, let this word be ministering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Grab your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, I need to find our technical person. Uh, this thing went off. Uh, if you could just, yeah, you go, Robert, thank you. Yeah, just to get it set. Then we good. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, we're going to read. And then we're going to allow God just to be God in our midst. If you're in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I'm reading from the ESV. Um, doesn't matter whatever translation you may have. I want you to kind of take a look at it. It's a very, 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 very familiar passage of Scripture that we just want to share um, a few things from. And it begins by saying this in verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak with the tongue of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic, prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. Then verse 4 says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Verse 8 says, love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. Verse 11 says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I've been fully known. Then verse 13 says, so now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these, my translation says, it's love. Back up to verse 14 real quick. Um, there's a few phrases there that Katani and I just want to take a moment to talk about. Verse 4 says, love is patient and kind, love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth, love beer bears all things, love believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Now, let me just say this, and then we're going to go to work and kind of talk through this to allow God to move and have his way. Um, we're not going to be dealing with a complete exegesis of um, all of chapter 13, but uh, I want to focus on verses 4 through 7, and we're just going to talk through verse 4 through 7 um, to just kind of explain it a little bit, okay? So the word love, if you, your translation, the word love is used all over the place in verses 4 through seven. And let me just give you a brief definition of what love is, and then we're going to walk through this, okay? So the, the Greek word agape or agapeo is used, and it means to have love for someone or something based on sincere appreciation or high regard. This is the biblical definition. To love means to regard with affection or loving concern. I like this phrase, sincere appreciation, or high regard. So, Katani, I will say I have extremely 
high regard or sincere appreciation for you. I think we can all say that God has high regard or sincere appreciation for us in that he sacrificed himself for us. Tell me how much you love me. There's no words to oh, explain Lord. it. <laughs> oh, 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 she gonna, oh, oh. We're in church. Yeah, yeah. I love you. I love you um, from the core of my being. Um, I know that when we met, um, God had a just, we knew, I think we both kind of knew that this was just not a hello, how are you kind of meeting. Um, I think that our hearts connected first with God. Yeah. And I saw the God in you and you saw the God in me. And that's what uh, was the foundation of our love. Yeah, I was dating somebody else when I met you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't cute, huh? Yeah, but God, God knows what he's doing. So look at verse 4. And um, there's, we want to talk about these things. These, these words I want to talk about. Uh, we're just going to go here because we want to talk about something as it relates to relationship and marriages. I want us to understand these words and um, what does it mean and how do we apply it in relationships? How do we apply it if it's dating, if it's marriage? What was God's intent underneath of using these words for us to understand what it means? The first one is verse 4 where it says, love is patient and love is kind. And here's what patience means. And then we're going to talk through it and then to kind of walk through it. Patience means to demonstrate Patience, and don't miss that phrase, despite difficulties, to be patient. And then I love, I love the, the, the phrase that says to remain patient. And I know the word's being used over and over to define itself, but I want y'all to get this. And then to wait patiently, right? And then the next phrase where it says kindness has to do with to provide something beneficial for someone as an act of kindness, to act kind or to be kind or show kindness. Now, here's the interesting thing about patience, and then I want to hear what you're saying about this, right? Patience, that, that word, the grammar that's kind of nuanced in the word patience, it's in the present tense, and what that means is that something that you do that there is no assessment of the completion of the thing. Okay, this is important, because here's what that means as it relates to God and us. God is patient with us, and his patience does not run out. And because his patience does not run out, he continues to provide kindness. Does that make sense? Okay, so let me say it again, let me say it again. Um, here's what, what's nuanced in the word. Patience, then, is something that, that when you encounter each other, you show it towards each other, but it doesn't run out. So when it says love, present tense, is patience, that means love continues to be patient over and over and over. So there's no reserve nerve. <laughs> there's no you're getting on my nerve in patience, right? And because of that, Regardless of how I feel, if I'm going to show love, I mean, kindness in, in patience, I have to be kind. I have to kind of show love. I have to do all that stuff towards you, right? So here's a question I want to ask. I'm telling you I ask this, okay? So in relationships then, why is it so important for couples to, be ex to exemplify patience and be kind with each other, okay? So here's the thing. In other words... Wait to hear the whole story, get all the facts before blowing up, and then when the results come in, as opposed to blowing up, it's okay. Forgive. Talk about that. Well, patience and kindness um, really yeah. is a fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm. I'm, I'm going to, you know, really just talk. Maybe not everybody in here is saved. Maybe everybody's not in a... In, um, um, has a relationship with God, but I'm speaking to those who have a relationship with God, and if you don't have a relationship with God, hopefully by the end of this, you will have accepted him as your yeah. Lord and Savior. But patience and kindness really is a fruit of the Spirit. It yeah. is, it is um, something that when God, 
when, when God formed us, we were formed in the image of God. And when God breathed, breathed his breath into us, he gave us everything that we needed. And that includes the patience and the kindness to be able to deal with each other. Now, it's not easy. Right. And it's, it's, a, it's difficult to get to know each other. You know, when you're young, um, in your 20, in, in, well, in, in, at any age, because some of us ain't grown up yet. But when you're still, when your mindset is still young and you're still childish in your ways and you feel those emotions of love, mainly you're really feeling a lot of hormones that are bouncing all over the place. But when, when, when you make that commitment to someone and you all end up getting married um, and you have not had counseling, you have not sat with your parents, um, it's a whole nother world dating than it is being married and being going into a house and living in within four walls with another person that you think you know is very difficult and it takes a level of patience and it takes a level of kindness to uh, get through it, to, to understand it. As when you're young, you're hot headed, you got your own mind, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna speak what you think or you're gonna you know, try and get, get your way. But as you begin to mature in Christ, you really begin to understand what love is. And so love, you know, patience and kindness, it's like the ligaments and the muscles of love. It's, it's just like if you were going to work out and you want, it, you want results. When you're overweight, you go work out, you, you know, and you, you feel the pain of it that first week, you're just like, I can't do this. This is, you know, it's very painful and we all, like 99% of us give up. Um, but if you keep at it, you begin to see the results. You begin to see the muscles. You begin to see you're, you're losing weight. You're toning down um, and that your health is improving. The same thing is with love. You have got to work on it. You have got to work on it diligently. It's not a, you know, I'm going to hit the gym today and, you know, hey, I lost a little more weight. And then I'm, I'm you know, it's a maintenance. It's a, it's a lifetime maintenance that you have to go through. And so as we learn to, to just ingest the, the love of God and the kindness of God, that helps us to understand how much God loves us. So patience and kindness, it, it's just something that has to be worked on every day. When you wake up in the morning, and when I was young, I used to read this scripture. It was one of my favorite passages. I used to read it and read it and read it because I wanted you know, to display the fruits of, of the Spirit. Um, and when I'm not displaying the fruits of the Spirit, which could be quite often, especially Hallelujah. back in my, my younger years, <laughs> you know, you have to understand that as you learn love, you learn how to love, you know how to learn how to be patient, and you learn how to be kind, you have to understand that those things, the, the opposite is, you know, screaming, yelling, acting a fool. Um, you have to understand where that's coming from. And it really is a spiritual thing because when you look back at generational curses, when you look back at circumstances that have happened in your life, whether it was a, pa a bad past relationship or whatever, all of those things feed into your relationship. And so your husband might say something to you or your boyfriend might say something to you that really has nothing to do with anything, but it triggered something from your past. And so you just, you snap, you snap, not because of what they said, but because of the memory that's come. And so you have to learn that, you know, I have got to really sit down and, and understand myself, understand my spouse, understand that, you know, he wasn't really meaning it that way, but I took it there. And so we really have to understand, you know, from our past experiences and things like that, that we've really got to get into the presence of God and just deal with ourselves first. That way we can display love and kindness to each other. When, when I was fasting about this church, I had a, a deacon. Amen. Yeah, show us some love. Yeah, can, my mic went away. Um, I had a deacon that, that would sit on the front row, and every time I'd say something that um, he liked, he'd say, listen at yourself, preacher, listen at yourself. That meant he wanted me to apply the word to myself. And so, listen at yourself, girl. Listen. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Don't I'm get just, that other eye knock. Yeah, yeah. Up, okay. <laughs> Patience, patience, right? <laughs> patience, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we, we must have patience, and, and we must be kind in the midst of the patience. Let's look, at, let's look at the next one. So here's the thing, people. Apply patience. This is interesting. Love, not only is it patience and kind, but it does not envy, nor does love boast. This is interesting, okay? Here's what envy means. To experience strong envy or resentment against someone, to be jealous, 
um, to be envious, to have intense negative feelings over another's achievement or success, and to be filled with jealousy. And here's what boasting means. To heap praise on oneself or to behave as a braggart. And I like that word windbag. A person who talks but ain't saying nothing. Anybody know anybody like that? Don't look at your spouse. You know, <laughs> talking a whole lot but ain't saying nothing, right? Okay, so here's the thing about, here's, here's what, um, because what we want, want y'all to take away today is when you say to your, your, your significant other, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever, when you say, I love you, you're saying, I'm going to be patient with you. I'm going to be kind to you. I am not envious of you, and I'm not going to boast about me. You kind of get what I'm saying? So here's the thing that, that I took away from that. I was just kind of processing a little bit. Um, he, it, it, there's two things, right? The boasting is, is um, grammaticians say in the middle voice, meaning it's something that I'm not going to do about myself, okay? Anybody know anybody that before they can even begin a sentence, they have to talk about what they did, how great they are, what they accomplished? You got anybody like that? You know, that does not exist in relationships, right? It should not be in relationships. And so here's the thing as it relates to, to relationship, and you and I probably deal with this a little bit. The idea of competition in relationship should not exist. In other words, I'm not competing against you, and you're not competing against me. We should be one in the relationship, and I should be pressing you to achieve more, and you should be celebrating my achievement or accomplishments, because what we have is not for the individual, it's for us together as a couple. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So in relationships, there's no room for competition. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing worse um, or nothing more dangerous and damaging you can do to your, to your spouse yeah. um, when it comes to boasting and being arrogant. Um, That's the next word. We'll hit that. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to being boastful. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with being proud of your accomplishments. There's nothing wrong with, you know, there's nothing wrong with being proud of it. But when your accomplishment becomes who you are and you have to let everybody know, then yeah. that, that begins to really just put bitterness in the heart. Yeah. And it begins to put anger in the heart. And it begins to put resentment in the heart because everything is about you. When everything becomes about you, you can't compliment you know, your wife, you can't compliment your husband. Um, they might be looking like, you know, like they just stepped out of vogue and you, but you know, but you're, you're, but look at me. Well, what do I look like? You know, that is just stuff that will just embitter a woman's heart. I'm gonna just talk for the women. It will embitter a woman's heart when you can't, you know, when you feel like, gosh, you know, I think I look kind of good. And your husband comes to you and wants you to compliment him. Excuse me, <laughs> you know, so it, it, it there's nothing, there's nothing more that can stop, um, begin to put venom in a person's heart. And really what that begins to do, it begins to, to border, borderline to me, this is just personally to me, it begins to boarding on the line of, of witchcraft and satanic ritual. When you can't think about nothing but yourself and you gotta tell everybody how much money you have, what, about your education, what you drive, and all you do is just build on what, me, me, my successes, me, my, my successes. That's the same thing that got, got Lucifer thrown out of heaven. Because Lucifer was the, the key worshiper in heaven. He ran, you know, he was the worship leader. And he began to say, God, you know, God created you. So everything that you got really ain't you, it's God. Right, and he right. began to stop looking at, 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 he began to look at his accomplishments and what he was doing and how he was able to take people into the presence of God. And he said, well, you know, I want some of this for myself. So he wanted people to begin to worship him. And you have to be careful of, of how you conduct yourself because Satan got thrown out of heaven just for that same conduct because he wanted the worship to come to himself. And oftentimes people in church will be like, oh, you know, I sang that song. Oh, you really sang that song? Oh, no, I didn't. Yes, please. I, I didn't know you know, and you really want that because it feeds you, it thrives you, it, it, it messes, it, you know, it plays into your ego. But your ego ain't nothing. It don't mean nothing right, because right. God can snatch everything you have 
away from you so quickly, you will fall just like Satan, hit that ground so hard, you won't know what happened. So when you are boastful and when you are, are um, a prideful person, you really need to, to submit that to God because the only person you should be boastful about is the man who created you, the God who created you. Amen. Amen. Good, good, good. So, so the idea of, of in relationships, um, since it's teamwork, teamwork, there should be no room for I'm better than you or I'm smarter than you, um, it should all be about us being together. Very, very important. Okay, look at... Well, look well, at well not in only that, in everything. You know, a lot of times, whoever is a breadwinner in the house, the man or the woman, it doesn't, you know, it's yeah. still, when you become one, that yeah. money becomes one, the bank account becomes one, and you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to, you know, feel like, Oh, goodness, if I ask for $20, you know. But you should be able to, you should have your own debit card. Hello. <laughs> you should be able to access each other's accounts. You should be able to, you know. But when, <laughs> but when a person is stingy, when a person, you know, Let I made sweat. this money. I did this. I did that. <laughs> and and, and you're, maybe you're the breadwinner, but you feel yeah. like, you know, you need to manage the family. You need to manage the resources and things like that. Yeah. That, I'm telling you, gentlemen, Y'all think, you talk about a, creating a bitter woman. We'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to right. that. Amen. We'll get to that. Right. <laughs> we'll get I'm to right. that, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Good, 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 good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I do this. This is dangerous, yeah. <laughs> number three. Let me hit number three. Okay. So let me hit number three uh, so you get that. This is important. Um, love, this is a good one. Love is not arrogant. Nor is love rude. Okay, let me read the definitions here. Arrogance has to do with to cause someone, and, and notice, how, notice how this is stated. This is a very, very important piece here. To cause someone to be proud, to be arrogant, to be haughty, to make them proud, to make them arrogant, arrogant to make them haughty, to cause them to have, look, look at this, an exaggerated self-conception or to be puffed up or to make someone proud. I want you to hear me um, use that word over and over to make someone, to make someone proud, okay? Because that's, 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 I think that's what the grammar kind of nuances is that, like, let me, your job in the relationship is not to brag so much about me that my head gets big. Kind of get what I'm saying? Here, here's what that looks like. Um, and it, most of us have children, uh, had children or something, and then you have your little child that's great in sports, and you brag so much about the child that in time, the child develops this arrogance or big head that I'm the best at everything, right? And then you see your child play a game or do something, and they might not have done as well, but here's where we come back to them. You're better than such and such. You're better than such and such, right? And we instill that so much in the mind of the child that they grow up being arrogant. The principle is the same in marriage, that, that my job in the relationship is to help keep you humble and not brag so much about you, fine as you may be, yeah. And your job in a relationship is to keep me humble by not bragging so much about me. So here's what the, the, that phrase says. When it says love is not arrogant, it's saying that in the love relationship, your role is to keep me humble and my role is to keep you humble. I wonder if we ever thought of that like that. Yeah, yeah. And then here's the other part. And then it says, it's not rude. Here's what rude means. To act in defiance, uh, defiance of social or moral standards resulting in disgrace. To embarrass your spouse. To make them shameful. To act shameful, indecent behavior or shame. You know how it is. Um, some of us won't go out with each other because we're embarrassed of what may happen in public. Y'all don't have that problem? It says love, love doesn't do that, okay? Um, there ought to be a level of mutual respect. So here's a question I had for you. So then, uh, how do you di differentiate between having fun and being rude or to act shamefully? Because when we were young, we would go to the party, and the party didn't begin till. Let me, you got there. It's till we got there. Yeah, you know how it was. I took over. Was I rude? Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> wow. So this is Tom, something you that we me had. For these things. You know, you, you, you <laughs> this is something that we dealt wow. with, um, wow. you know, in our earlier years because Pastor, I know something Why about you? island men. They are arrogant. 
Woo! Wow. <laughs> They were no, eating. Shut so that I mic off. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. when I first met him, um, wow. he was just very arrogant. Um, I was. I had yeah, issues. Yeah, he was yeah, very yeah, arrogant. Issues, and yeah. I mean, every Sunday, and I kid you not, he would go to Dillard's or Macy's or whatever, buy a sock and a tie to make sure that everything, <sighs> and a handkerchief, to make sure that everything matches. Now, hey, I'm still at JCPenney or, you know, wherever. <laughs> but he would, he would be so arrogant that, you know, everything, his whole persona was just, um, wow. you know, I'm haughty, I'm arrogant. And it used to just, I mean, it used to just eat me alive. You know, wow. in the morning he'd come, how do I look? Do I look good? I'd be like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Dang. And he was I always, didn't expect this, you always know? <laughs> expecting, you know, and then after a while, you know, at first it was cool, but then after a while I was just like, are you serious? Yeah. Um, but, you know, when, you're, when you become rude and you become arrogant, it really is, especially like when you're going out and you want to be the life of the party, you want to, you know, hey, I'm in the room and you, you're the attention grabber, you want everybody to laugh at you, and you might make side jokes about your wife or your spouse or something. And it might be funny the first time, it might be funny the second time, but when you're always looking for that laugh yeah, and you're yeah. always, you know, your wife like becomes it. a little punching bag for your, yeah. for your laugh and for your attention, let me tell you, y'all, okay. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that becomes, yeah, you know, you yeah. really get bitter and angry and then you're like, I don't even want to go. I don't even want to yeah. be seen with you yeah. because, you know, people, what are people saying about me? How are people perceiving me? Yeah. And then it just begins to open doors because then other women think, oh, is that what he thinks of her? Or, you know, he can just sit up there and talk about her. Well, let me make sure that, you know, I'm going to go address him over at the side and say this and that. Like, you know, oh, she shouldn't say things like that about you, you know, and then his head get all puffed up, you know, and it just, it's just cycles of, of craziness that come. So you have to be really, really careful um, when you're when you're dealing with each other, and when you're especially when you're in public. You know, you can't be arrogant, you can't be rude. You should be esteeming your spouse or your girlfriend at all times. Um, yes, we might slip and we might say something. You know, and it might be funny for the moment, but like I said, if it continues, yeah, you know, and it might not even need an apology at first. But when it continues, you need an apology, and then you go back and you say, "Hey, you know, that really hurt my feelings." Oh, I was just kidding, out girl. You know, I didn't mean that. No, that's not the way I took it because in my mind, I'm like, okay, you made a fool out of me in front of everybody. And so we have to be very uh, cautious of, of our language, uh, especially in our homes uh, at all times, not to be arrogant and not to be rude towards each other. Okay, I got one. Okay, all right, okay, cool, cool. All right, you got me. You got me. Yeah, yeah, you got me. All right, I want you to talk about this. Okay, now hold up. Let me set it up. Or it says, love does not insist on its own way. I had a friend of mine, um, one of my mentors, he tweeted this statement. Fellas, if she's not close to you, she'll be closed to you. Yeah, yeah, he tweeted that. So here's what it looks like in my home. Rub my back. Rub my feet. Rub my whatever. And then... If it don't happen, <laughs> you insist on your own way. So why do women help the brothers out for a little while? We are, do that, do that. Yeah, what's, what's up with that? Love does not beings. insist on its own way. Okay. Yeah. It's not for you. <laughs> the wife does not belong to her. The Bible says, let me preach, yeah. Your body belongs to the husband. The Bible says, yeah, come on, y'all. And, and <laughs> fellas, can I get an amen? Help me out here. Yeah, thank you, yeah. So, so why, 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 yeah. Come on, fellas, don't be ashamed of it. Yeah, we, we all share that struggle, yeah. And so, yeah, so, no, oh, she going to stand up. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, what's up, yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> and this yeah. is just me. I didn't study it. I didn't research it or nothing, but. When God created woman, mm. he created her with emotions. Oh, okay. Okay? Oh. He created her as a, 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 a lover, a caregiver, a nurturer. And so in our emotions, we just don't wake up ready to go. I mean, it just, it don't work like that. Maybe sometimes, but we just don't wake up like, okay, like y'all do. <laughs> but there's, there's a process that will get you to the expected end. Oh, okay. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, wow. wow. So if you're asking for a massage or you're asking for your feet to be rubbed, you rub, your, you rub the feet right, you rub that back right or whatever your thing is, <laughs> you will not have to worry about her own way. The love. Yeah. You will not have to worry about, you will get the end result that you want. Yeah. And so we just, you know, as, as women, you guys need to know that we are emotional beings. God created wow. us differently. Our bodies function differently. Our love making is in our mind and it's in our heart. It's just not, you know, let me not get, go there, but it's just not the act of love. It, it's something that comes out of our heart. It comes out of our emotions and out of our mind. So if you just, you know, want to slam bam, thank you, ma'am. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right. I'm going to rub your back. I'm going to rub your foot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to do it all. Okay. All right. I, I, I heard you. I heard you. As he said, I heard you. Now, this is, this is another one for the brothers. Okay. This is, this, I'm talking for the brothers here. Now, it says love is not irritable and it's not resentful. Okay, now here's what these words mean, because some of your translations say something different. So irritable means to be provoked or upset at someone or something um, involving severe or e emotional concern. Okay, some of your translations says love is not easily provoked. Okay, so um, here's what the grammar in that says, that if I love you, I am not supposed to provoke you and you are not supposed to provoke me. So based on everything we talked about so far, um, when I do something wrong, you're patient, kind. We get all that stuff, forgiveness going on, all that good stuff. But this resentful part has me. Resentful says to keep a record of wrong or to keep a mental record of events for the sake of some future action to remember, to bear in mind. Oh, Lord. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> to keep a mental record of something. I got to say it again. To be rendered as or to add up in one's mind or to make a list in one's heart. Here's what, now you don't do this because I, I want you not to, you know, make things work for your own. But other women do this. You're perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter when he did it. It doesn't matter how long ago. If anything looks like it 40 years later, she can go back to 1901 at 4 o'clock in the afternoon with the red shoes that he was wearing and the color pants and the color hats. And the tech, that, that thing kind of says that, that love should not be resentful. They should not keep a record. So it's almost like women have elephant brains, or they keep, they keep uh, what's it, a, a, a gazillion terabytes of storage that they can fast access that stuff. And all the brother has to do is glimpse, and you, eee, oh, that look like this, uh-huh, uh-huh, I remember that. What's that all about? It's just the way God created it. No, y'all got to fix that. No, 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 Like no, I said, that, women No, have, no, women. no. <laughs> We are emotional beings. We love out of our heart. And a heart is where we, our emotions are kept. So if there has been an offense to us, if there's been something wrong done for us, we remember it. You remember it, too. You, you all just act like you don't remember. But <laughs> we remember that. I mean, it's like, to me, it's like an embedment in the heart and the mind. That's why we need to be careful of how we treat each other because it's going to come back up at some point and it's how you as the woman or you know the man it doesn't matter it could be vice versa how you handle it when that memory comes back up but God doesn't wipe our memory bank away and I think women just because we're emotional um, beings and we're nurturers that you know we tend we do remember a lot of stuff yeah. more. But is we, that, I mean, does that make it right though well it doesn't make it wrong that we remember it, make it, wrong that we it just remember. it's just how we react to it yeah so yeah. in the heat of an argument or in the heat of um, some complications going on, of course that thought comes to you like, I'm going to get them. Oh, I'm going to get them because, you know, it's down low. <laughs> but it's like, 
Father, you know, help me to approach this in a different way. Yeah. Help me Amen. to love go. through this yeah. moment because yeah. right now I'm ready yeah. to snap and go off yeah. and let him know who he really is. But when you really, <laughs> when you have been growing in Christ, you realize that's not the same person. Right. And although this argument has escalated and as a reminder of something of the past, I've got to be mature enough to look beyond that yes. and have a, a have a, a, dis, uh, a discussion that is going to be pleasing in the sight of God. Amen. See, love is for grown folks. It's yeah. not for children. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be yeah. grown yeah. and you have to understand. Yeah. You have had to mature to a stage in yeah. life to where yeah. it, it's just not a joke. It's yeah. not, it's, you know, getting married yeah. and going through children and finances and difficulties and affairs. And all that. It's life. Yeah. That sin entered the world. It is part of life. Um, it comes from the pulpit all the way out yeah. to the parking lot. Sin will attack your home. But you have to learn how to grow up spiritually and, and just in your, in your own self. You've got to learn how to grow up and grow up quickly. Because if you don't, the enemy will come in and tear you apart. Yeah. Yeah. I have so many friends that have yeah. divorced um, yeah. or separated and yeah. just are in a bad place in life, raising children by themselves because they just did not take the time to sit down and, and deal with themselves first. Yeah. I could never, I tried, I tried to change pastor. I, yeah. I did I everything did. I could, you know, cause you know, oh, I'm gonna get married, he'll change. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> and I spent so much time trying to change him and correct him, which made him, you know, man up like, I ain't Maybe. no punk. Yeah, yeah. You know, so oh. you really have to deal with your yourself first and your relationship with Christ. So let me let me let me do this second one, right? This next one, because that, that feeds in. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay. And we gotta practice this at home so I can know what you're gonna say. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me do this one and, and I'm gonna talk on this one. I don't need you saying nothing because you tell too much. All right. <laughs> so let me um, let me do this one, okay? And and I'll be transparent. I'll be transparent. Okay, so so this one says because uh, we're out of time, so I'll move. Here. This one says, love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in truth. This is very, very important. Families, couples, spouses, whatever relationship you're in, I want you all to hear me say this one real quick. Uh, it says, wrongdoing is the Greek word that kind of translates unrighteousness um, or to an activity which is unjust or unjust deed or unjust righteousness or just let me just say it here, sin. Okay? So here's how the note I says. Love does not celebrate sin, but calls it out or confronts it or um, causes the unrighteous person or unrighteousness to face, that's supposed to be face, the truth. Here's why. Let me talk about that. You can't say nothing. Okay. Yeah, here, here's what this looks like. Um, in couples, we cover each other too much, and because we don't call the thing out, we perpetuate the behavior. What that phrase is saying in English is this. Love calls you out so you can be right. I'll live, true story and then, I'll, I'll, and then we'll kind of go to the last one real quick. I'm a brother that was caught up in a lot of crazy stuff. And his wife was hiding it the whole time. So I'd go to her and say, what's up? She'd never tell us what was going on. Um, and then one day, of course, when the police comes and busts everything at all, everything hits the fan. You kind of get what I'm saying. Um, she could have saved him jail time had she called it out. But because the money looked good, everything looked well, love, quote, unquote, covered. Okay. See the problem, though. I'm trying to tell y'all, that's not love. Here's what it looks like with parents and child. Child behave, misbehave. As a parent, you don't say, it's okay, baby, I'm not going to whoop you today. You get that belt out, and you correct, and here's what you say. I'm doing this because I love you. <laughs> In marital relationships, I'm trying to get y'all to understand the Bible keeps the same principle. Here's why I don't want you to talk. Because in our relationship, had you not call me out, I'd still be in my foolishness. 
You kind of get what I'm saying? But she spoke. And for those of y'all that want to know what it was, shut up. Don't say nothing. All right. Next. All right, let's go. <laughs> so, <laughs> you got to call it out. You do, you do. I want y'all to hear me say that, okay? So, so if you're in something that you know your spouse is involved in, don't talk about, I'm just going to take it to God. No, 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 no. Call that thing out. Because you love them so much, correct it, okay? If, it, if you know they're at home watching pornography and you know about it and you're not saying nothing, you better say something. If you know they're involved in drugs, be it marijuana, be it whatever it is, and you're not saying something, you better say something. I, I want you all to hear me. Love calls out the unrighteousness so truth can surface in the relationship, all right? Last thing, and we're out of time. Let me just hit this real quick, and I want to ask a question. So love bears all things, love believes all things, Love hopes all things, and love endures all things, right? Let me see how I say this, and I want y'all to say this real quick. Um, um, I think we give up too quick in relationships. We give up too quick, especially in marriages. Um, we, 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 we abort or pull the exit plug way, way, way too quick. We say this all the time. Um, for you and I, it was 16 years of a lot of uncomfort, um, of, of stuff that wasn't right, um, did you love me during those 16 years? You didn't love Not me? Not the whole time. Not the whole time? Every now and then, though? A little bit? A little bit? Yeah. Come on, boy. Give, give me some. Yeah. No, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, 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 but then listen to what verse 11 says, and then I want to ask you this to wrap us up with this. Verse 11 says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. I think that connects to this thing here, that uh, young couples, um, don't pull the plug so quick, um, especially if God is still working. Let me just say that, okay? And if he or she wants to change, work it out. So what was it in you or that you saw that caused you not to pull the plug, even though you tried? Yeah. <laughs> And then um, let's pray. We'll talk honestly, about that. What, what held me and kept me was my faith in God and my relationship yeah. with God. If I hadn't had that, we would not be sitting here at this table. Trust me. Yeah. We would not be here. Yeah. But because um, I was able to see him through God's eyes mm, mm, and God had spoken to me, <clears throat> I was able to see him through God's eyes and see the righteousness and the good was there, but just knew that he was just fighting us in battle. It was simply, he, he's got an issue, he's dealing with it, he's fighting with it. Um, was it painful? Yes. Was it hurtful? Yes. Was it embarrassing? Yes. It was all of that. But at the end, I thought of the, the love that Christ has for me and the foolishness that I've done in my life. How can I judge someone? How can I, how can I be the one that says, oh, you did that? Or, you know, I can't cast blame when I know we all got secret sins that if, they, if God was to reveal them, we would, we would be in the same situation. And so, you know, I always think, you know, if we lived in the old times where nobody would probably be sitting up in this building because you know how God was dropping them. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> I know that I needed to be dropped. I know that I needed to be, you know, just take her out because she is crazy out of her mind. But God's love for me through all my sin and through yeah. all my unrighteousness helps me see my husband through God's eyes. Amen. So if you're struggling and you're dealing with that, just ask God, show him, or me or him, to, her or him to me through your eyes. You, you married him because you loved him, and you can get back to that love. Yeah, yeah. Let me say this um, by way of theology and practice. Uh, that talk back mic is in a monitor. Let me say this. Um, Love does not, and the verse 4 says it's patient, it's kind, does not envy, does not boast, is not arrogant, is not rude, does not insist on its own way, is not irritable or resentful, does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believe all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. By way of a theology and practice, God is love. And if God can do all of that for us, and God lives within us, then we as believers in Christ ought to be able to do that for each other. Um, and I think that's the challenge point this morning. For those of us or those of you that are in relationships, be it married or dating or whatever your relationship is, endeavor to be God or like God in the relationship. When it gets tough, when it gets difficult, remember these things that we talked about. 
and let your light shine so your spouse may see God in you and God may be glorified. Mm-hmm. I want you all to hear me say that. And, and there's a place where in, in, in our immaturity, when we first enter the relationship, we are children. We act like children because we don't know better. And so Paul talks about a maturation process that when I'm a child, I act like a child, I behave like a child, I spoke like a child. I said inappropriate things, I said crazy things, I did inappropriate things, but as I continued on the maturity trajectory or continuum, I started to lay aside those childish things and I became a man, okay? So women, men, don't give up on each other, see each other through the lens of Christ and work it out and let God be glorified in that, amen? Amen, Amen. come on, yeah. Here's what I want to do when Elder Roberts come in. I want you to um, pray for married um, couples, and then I'll pray for all the singles. Um, if you're in relationship um, or if you're married, we just want to invite you to stand just for a moment. I want Katani to pray over you. Whether your spouse is here or not, um, just stand, just stand, just stand. Um, dating, even if you're dating, any relationship whatsoever that you're in, just stand. Um, um, I want her just to pray a word of prayer over you. And then we're going to allow God to be God, yeah. Yeah. Precious Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Father God, our hearts have been opened, Lord. Our hearts have been received, Father. So Lord, I just intercede for these couples, Father God, those that are married, those that are dating, all those that are in relationship, Lord. Father God, you've stirred up some things in their hearts this morning, God. And Father God, I'm praying, Lord, that they will take what has been said, Father, and begin to apply it to their relationships, God. Father God, I pray that their relationship with you first, Father God, is strengthened and renewed, God. Because these principles come through a spiritual, they're spiritual principles, Father God. They come from your heart, from your very being, Lord. So let their relationship with you grow, Father God, to the point, Father, where they can, Father God, begin to display the actions, God, of love and peace and sound mind and soft speaking and singing spiritual psalms to each other, God. Father God, for all the challenges that everyone's going through right now, God, Father God, we just put a blessing over them, God. Father God, knowing that you can and you will, as they surrender to you, God, you will walk them through, Lord. Father God, we all have tests, we all have trials, but God, at the end, there is love, Father God. Agape love, a love that endures, Father God, a love that forgives. So right now, Father God, we just ask for forgiveness for the offenses we've made towards each other. And Father God, we vow to grow up, Father God, in you and grow up in our spiritual walk, Father God, so that we, Father God, will not be offenders, Father God, but we will be people who, who, who speak well of each other, who love each other, who share in each other's pain, God, that we become one, Lord. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Stay standing, married people. Single people, if you just stand up. Um, if you're single here, just, just stand. Just stand. I want to pray. I want to pray for you, and I want to share some real quick. Yeah. And that will be done. The Bible says here in um, the book of Corinthians, I lost my place. I, want, I just want to read this real quick. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but I will not be dominated by anything. And then it says here, the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will raise up all by his power. Do you not, you know that your body are members with Christ? And then it says here, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one with her? For it is written, the two shall become flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one with him. And then verse 18 says, flee sexual immorality. I wanted to read that for a reason just to say this to all of us and especially to our single people. You're living in a world where uh, they portray sex like it's nobody's business. They act like it's the cultural norm. But I want to say to you that if you can maintain your purity as best as you can and realize that you're married to God, God will be glorified in that. 
Ladies, let me say this to you as your pastor. Don't let no man pressure you into thinking that you need to have sex with him for him to marry you. Um, don't fall prey to that. Don't fall prey to that. Men are looking for godly, pure women. I married this girl because she was not like the rest of them. I want you all to hear me say that. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, let me say this to you. Respect our women. Respect our women. Respect our women. They're not sex objects. They're not all that stuff. Respect our women. Treat them as God would treat them. It's all right to date. I'm trying to get my Eddie to date. Bless his heart. <laughs> but, but, but let's be men and women of God and stand firm. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word. I pray for every single person of my voice. The temptations of this world is going to come against them like a flood. It's going to come strong. It's going to come crazy. But Holy Spirit, let them persevere. Let them stand firm. And those that are seeking a mate, God, send the right person. We give them to you, God. And if there's a person here that came that don't know you as Lord and Savior of their life, draw them to a relationship with you. We give them to you, God. Have your way. Thank you for what you're doing in our midst. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. Praise this pastor.